All right, guys. Well, it keeps trying to turn into a pleasant day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here. Uh, that would be on a Monday morning. We are hit Monday, October 11th, 2021. And uh, <laughs> so, you know, I try to keep it somewhat rained in over here on Collapse Chronicles. So I was wondering, how was I going to connect the dots between Columbus Day, yeah, all right? Columbus Day and the collapse of a planet. Like, okay, what am I gonna pull out of my hat to make the perfect connection between those two subjects, and I open up the mainstream media right here on Yahoo News, the number one story on planet Earth, as it should be for once, the number one story on planet Earth coming out of New Guinea, Papua or Papua, New Guinea. We call it New Guinea. All right, uh, so this is a long, involved piece from the Washington Post. I'm not going to have time to read the whole thing. I'll put the link onto it, and you can read it or finish it yourself. If there's anybody out there on a channel called Collapse Chronicles who does not understand why this story coming out of New Guinea uh, how many years, 530 years uh, after Columbus sailed the ocean blue, uh, is my chronicle of the collapse for uh, Columbus Day 2021. I honestly don't know if uh, the editors at Yahoo News who chose to run this story as the number one story on the planet gets it. If you do not get it, why I'm offering up this story, obviously I have had a failure to communicate and you need to maybe read, is it Howard Zinn's, what is it, A People's History of America or whatever. Okay, take it away, Washington Post, to celebrate Columbus Day. <clears throat> In secret tapes, palm oil executives disclose corruption and brutality. Hmm, where have we heard this story for the last at least 530 years? This is by a reporter named Desmond Butler. They're claiming this is an eight-minute read. If I was a speed reader, you couldn't read this book-length story. All right, take it away, Washington Post. <clears throat> the police drove into the village of Wat Wat in SUVs during a rainstorm. It was late on a July night in 2019, and they had come through the rainforest armed with guns and metal bars. Men and teenaged boys were dragged out of bed, beaten, and thrown into the mud. Some were arrested, held for weeks, and interrogated about vandalizing oil palm trees, according to an investigative report by the advocacy group Global Witness. <clears throat> One Wat Wat resident told investigators that the SUVs were owned by one of the companies that runs the local oil palm plantation. Quote, the company has a lot of money. They are able to give it to the police. Close quote. Global Witness said it did not name the villager to protect her safety. The Washington Post did not speak to the woman directly, but learned details of her identity from two global witness investigators who interviewed her. 
Global Witness's two-year investigation is a rare behind-the-scenes look at the corruption, labor abuses, and destructive environmental practices in an industry, you know, the palm oil industry, that is clearing carbon-rich rainforest and emitting greenhouse gases at a rate that has become a growing concern for climate scientists. The world's most common vegetable oil has spawned vast fortunes, you know, for a handful of people, while coming under scrutiny for its labor practices and environmental impact. The report includes recordings of oil palm managers detailing corruption and labor abuses to investigators posing as commodity traders. The investigation has already provoked a response from 17 corporations, some of which have pledged to remove those palm oil companies the advocacy group identified as their suppliers. Yes, quoting the authors of the report, quote, a pattern of coercion and violence right across Papua New Guinea has denied local people the traditional use of their forest, integral to their culture and livelihoods. Huge areas of tropical forest have been deforested, and much more forest remains at risk unless action is taken. Close quote, yes, unless action is taken. There you go. <clears throat> the group's undercover investigators taped an executive from a Papua New Guinea-based company called Tobar Investment Limited, seemingly confirming the Wat Watts residence account of the police raid of their village, which came in response to the destruction of oil palm trees on the company's plantation. Edward Lamour, the executive, told investigators in a secretly recorded online meeting that his company had approached police after the vandalism to get them to send a message to local residents. He said that a close friend of his ran the, quote, Special Operations Police Force, and that he could call the officer, quote, whenever we want assistance. They did some bashing up, he said. They know we are the owners now, close quote. The secretly recorded conversation uh, were broadcast uh, Thursday in Britain, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Lamour, who is a founding director of Tobar and a former deputy provincial administrator of East New Britain province, located in a large island off the coast of New Guinea, did not respond to a request for comment. The Global Witness Report looks at Malaysian palm oil companies operating in New Guinea, including the East New Britain Resources Group and a company called Rimbunan Hijal that it says collectively have cleared tens of thousands of acres of rainforest in recent years. More than three quarters of the global products from oil palm trees come from Indonesia and Malaysia and makes its way through supply chains into products familiar to any Western consumer. From companies such as Colgate Palmolive, Kellogg's, and Nestle's, many of the buyers have so-called no deforestation, no peat, and no exploitation policies, otherwise known as NOPE.
<clears throat> but Global Witness found some of the palm oil companies whose abuses they documented all the supply list for those Western for those three Western corporations, among others. Do you think so? This is really sky is blue stuff. All right. In a statement, Kellogg Corporation called the allegations in the report very concerning. Very concerning while confirming that three of its palm oil suppliers had indirectly made purchases from one of the, uh, d d you know, just one of these planet eaters. <clears throat> Kellogg said it immediately contacted its suppliers when it learned about the allegations and that the oil palm company is no longer in its supply chain. This is, uh, a, I guess, an an anonymous statement from the Kellogg Corporation, quote, Kellogg is committed to working with our suppliers to support the production of sustainable palm oil from sources that are environmentally appropriate, socially beneficial, and economically viable. Anything less is not acceptable at the Kellogg Corporation. Yes, the Kellogg Corporation only getting its, uh, its palm oil from sustainable palm oil uh, corporations who are environmentally appropriate. So just in case the Kellogg Corporation and anybody else is not aware of this. Okay, one more time, guys. There is no such thing as sustainable palm oil. This planet's most common vegetable oil is perhaps the single most unsustainable vegetable product in the history of humanity. Okay, now that we've cleared that up, for the Washington Post, since WAPO did not want to uh, elaborate. Okay, let's look at what Nestle had to say. Nestle said it confirmed that it has identified nine, nine of its palm oil mills owned by one of these companies in its supply chain, but has not been connected to palm oil from these planet eaters since 2019. The company says it is investigating and will suspend any company shown to be responsible for deforestation. Yes, or that does not have a policy to obtain consent from indigenous people before developing its plantations. Nestle said it requires companies to provide data to allow satellite monitoring that would detect deforestation. In a company quote in a company statement from Nestle, close quote, quote, we take allegations of breaches to our responsible sourcing standard very seriously. Yes. Colgate Palm Olive, what they're talking about, Colgate Palm Olive, what a lot of people don't realize is that uh, probably as much palm oil goes into shit like soap and shampoo and cleaners and cosmetics than it does into food. Nearly every one of uh, Colgate palm olives uh, soap and shampoo and cosmetics has is full of palm oil. It's not just in food. <clears throat> Colgate palm olive did not respond to a request for comment, uh, I bet. But Global Witness said that it has had supply chain connections to, uh, you know, these planet eaters in 
would add the group to its, quote, internal grievance log and investigate them further. <clears throat> All right, a little bit of background on this. Uh, as Malaysia came under increasing pressure in recent decades for clearing its rainforests faster than any country on earth, some of its lumber companies began looking to the virgin rainforest of Papua New Guinea. The mostly unspoiled island country has since become one of the biggest exporters of tropical lumber, and then in the wake of all the cutting, Malaysian palm oil companies move in. And so this is how uh, the, these horseshit, uh, no deforestation pledges, how they make it. So what happens is the lumber companies come in and completely obliterate the virgin rainforest off of the planet. So what's left behind is, you know, a logged out, burned out wasteland. Okay, so then they sell the burn, they, they take their cut, literally, they sell the land to uh, these palm oil companies. Well, the palm oil companies weren't the ones who logged the virgin rainforest. Uh, you know, compared to what they inherited, a, a, a palm oil plantation looks pretty green and healthy. So the Kellogg's and Colgate Palmolive and Nestle's and all of these other products all, all overflowing in your cabinet, they can claim that the palm oil supplier uh, is not responsible for any deforestation. Uh, they didn't cut down a single tree. There you go. So that is a, uh, so that is how they get a sustainability certification from these unadulterated horseshit uh, sustainability uh, pledges. Uh, the, the, you know, the, the, the sustainability pledges are, are, are one of the biggest uh, uh, corporate greenwashing horse shit. Uh, sustainable palm oil. Every palm oil tree on this planet is growing where until maybe up until last week there had been a tropical rainforest. Oh, I don't know, for the last 10 million years or so. All right, where was I in this eight-minute read? <clears throat> Impoverished Papua New Guinea sees its economic future in palm oil. By 2030, in the next nine years, it plans to increase the size of its oil palm plantations tenfold. Tenfold. From the 2016 level, which stood at about 360,000 acres. But the country has also pledged a sharp reduction in its carbon emissions from deforestation by the same year in a national commitment to the United Nations. Huh. The Global Witness report suggests that the government may have a hard time reining in the well-connected palm oil companies Tobar Investment Limited, the local company behind the raid in Wat Wat, operates under a joint venture, you know, with ENBR, with one of these big international conglomerates. This is where it, it, there, there's no way you can penetrate uh, these, these opaque supply chain lines. Uh, they're all a bunch of damn planet eaters. <clears throat> all right. Over a business dinner, the undercover investigators taped two managers from a subsidiary 
of ENBR, you know, the the umbrella global corporation bragging about corruption of government officials to obtain logging permits and land access. The managers also told the investigators that they had workers as young as 10 working on their plantations, said one um, manager identified is Bernard Lolot. Quote, sometimes we bend the rules just to make things happen. Yes. Do you think so? By the way, uh, it is illegal in New Guinea to employ children under 16 for heavy labor. Hmm. At another dinner, Global Witness said the Malaysian chief executive of the company named Ang Kui Tan detailed a scheme to evade import duties in India. He explained that the duties are higher for palm oil coming from New Guinea than from Malaysia. Quote, so we have to make it show like it comes from Malaysia. Hmm, do you think so? Uh, in a statement to the, to the Washington Washington Post, Tan did not deny the veracity of the recorded conversations, but said the company had not engaged in bribery or tax evasion. Well, there you go. Uh, he said his company, quote, provides essential services such as aid posts, schools, bridges, roads, basic life skills training to local communities, clean drinking water, and electricity supply to the least developed uh, districts, villages, and communities uh, within East New Britain province. This is still, uh, we're going to get uh, get back to my Manga Bay uh, story uh, in a minute here. Continuing this quote, any purported claims of discussions and our responses, uh, blah, 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 is all hearsay and not true, Tan said of the bribery allegations, emphasizing that the company, anyway, uh, did not pay bribes uh, to government officials, uh, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so, but the statement that he was making, you know, Manga Bay uh, also covered this on Friday, and they don't really talk about it here, but what Manga Bay was talking about, and, and I was talking about, and I ran on Friday from the same story, is that uh, a lot of these indigenous people support these planet eaters. You know, why they don't support the environmental destruction uh, if these planet eaters are promising, namely, roads, electricity, and schools, they will roll out the red carpet that, uh, this is a repeat of my rant on, on Friday, that they're humans. And, and, and if the choice is environmental destruction of their homelands for the, for the past thousands of years uh, versus a new road, uh, electricity, a school, and some internet, they are going to choose the new road, the electricity, the internet, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so uh, don't forget that inconvenient truth. I know the the noble savage mythers are really out in force today. Uh, okay, Global Witness says that Rimbunan He Jiao Company, whose name means Forever Green, Forever Green Corporation, 
cleared nearly 81 square miles of coastal rainforest in New Guinea's New Britain province. The report also detailed a dozen work-related deaths on the company's plantations, some of which were not recorded in a government database that catalogs required incidents of workplace casualties. Uh, Forever Green, Forever Green, yes, did not respond to a request for comment from the Post, but the Global Witness Report includes a statement that the company sent to one of its customers about the allegations, which emphasized the work the company had done to develop the local economy. In the statement, the company said the allegations in the report were out of context and, quote, without any real basis. It called Global Witness, quote, a group of economic vandals who do not care about the lives they destroy, close quote. While the companies stress the economic benefit to communities, you know, to indigenous communities, the report details the cost for local people living in the areas being developed as palm oil plantations. The witness in Wat Wat, who recounted the raid by police in July of 2019, was asked by Global Witness what good the development had done for her community. She replied, quote, only destruction. Only destruction. Uh, guys, it, it's the same damn story that it's been for 530 years, and it actually has got a hell of a lot uh, going farther back than 530 years. It's just been going on uh, here, uh, you know, in this hemisphere for 530 years. The same damn story. And uh, now it's, uh, you have the same old story unfolding in what a lot of people call the single last unspoiled Garden of Eden left on planet Earth, which is New Guinea. Uh, it is under absolute attack by these planet eaters so i uh, you know you can have your your box of fruit loops and your bar of uh, ivory spring soap uh it's all about the fruit loops and the ivory spring soap but uh as i say do not forget that there are a lot of these noble savages uh in in new guinea just like the ones i met in the peruvian amazon a few years ago rolling out the red carpet uh to these people uh because they want the goodies they want their piece of the pie. And why shouldn't they want their piece of the pie? I want my piece of the pie. Speaking of my piece of the pie, I need to wrap up this uh, Columbus Day Chronicle of the Collapse. And uh, we have to go crank up some uh, gas-sucking giant uh, weed eater. Kind of, it's kind of like a cross between a weed eater and a chop saw because I have to get out there and do some planet nibbling uh, before we bring in this big-ass uh, planet-eating machine in here on Saturday to do some real uh, literal eating of the planet. So I have to wrap this up. I suggest you get out there and enjoy your bowl of Fruit Loops while you still can. And you can thank uh, the rainforest of New Guinea for it. My guys. 
Okay, little dog. But you're not going out there and chasing chippies. You are on a you're on the chain for the rest of our time here because you're an incorrigible little uh, planet nibbling chippy killing dog. You're on your chain. You know that. Do you know that or not? Bye, guys.